Hi, and welcome to this VIEW quick tip. VIEW 2024 introduces a technology preview of rendering with cycles. You can use cycles in the viewports for interactive rendering and also for the final offline render. In this first implementation, all objects and materials are handed to the cycles render engine through an export of the entire scene to the RAM in the background. This is achieved by baking everything to meshes and texture maps and then exporting the scene as a USD file to the Cycles Hydra USD bridge. Let's look at the workflow in more detail. The first thing you should set up is an export zone from the file menu. The zone is required for exporting infinite objects such as the ground plane or a water plane. You can resize it to whatever size you need. And once you've created an export zone, you need to make sure to place any object for the final render fully within this zone. Because objects outside of the zone will not be rendered. And if you have large objects which lie in the zone only partially, for example a terrain, this can lead to weird results. In the render settings, select Cycles as the render engine. Within the Cycles render settings, you will find the same options as in Blender, including a selection between rendering on the GPU and the CPU. And by the way, the Cycles version used in VIEW 2024 is Cycles 3.6 from Blender 3.6. At the end of the render settings panel, you will find a few additional options for the view atmosphere. When exporting the scene to Cycles, the sky is rendered as an HDRI and you can define the rendering resolution, whether you want clouds to be rendered, and if you want to add an additional sunlight to the exported scene as well. I recommend you use the separate sun, because this will create better shadows, and the sun will turn reddish when it's low on the horizon. This is an effect which cannot be replicated with an HDRI only. The camera movement tolerance defines the threshold when to re-render the sky when launching a new cycles render, because the sky map is always rendered from the current camera perspective. When you make changes to the atmosphere, a re-rendering of the sky is enforced in any case, but without any changes to the atmosphere, you need to move the camera further than this distance for an update to be triggered. You can also choose to export clouds as OpenVDB files by enabling them in the volumetric section. And you can add a simple haze effect whose strength is linked to the aerial perspective setting in the atmosphere editor. Okay, so let's run an interactive render in the viewport. While view is baking the scene to USD, it also converts all baked materials on the fly into native cycles principled BSDF materials and it links the main material properties such as bump and normal strength or specular strength to the BSDF properties in cycles. And while the interactive render is running, you can move around the scene and do some basic editing such as moving or rotating objects. While it's also possible to edit an object's shape or material, every change you do will trigger a rebaking process, which will make interactive edits rather slow. So we suggest limiting those edits to moving, rotating and scaling only. And finally, you can set up the baking quality for each object by choosing Export Object. Here you can configure in which resolution to bake procedural materials, which channels to bake and how high the mesh baking resolution should be. We have a separate quick tip about this new export dialog on our channel, so just check it out. Also, I really suggest you take a look at the Cycles chapter in the VIEW documentation. I know reading documentation is quite boring, but you will find lots of tips for preparing a scene for rendering with Cycles. And which features are currently supported is also documented, and which ones aren't. And there's also a section on how to improve the baking times. Thanks for watching and happy rendering! Music